Hey, well, it's so good to be with you today. Uh, as we celebrate Easter, this such an important time in our calendar of the year, but also in history and understanding that what Jesus Christ did on the cross for humanity, the Son of God, Christ the Redeemer came. He died for our sin. Friends, this is what love looks like. Now, over the last few weeks as a church, we've been looking at the identity of Christ, ultimately with this goal of celebrating Easter and looking at the magnitude of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for humanity. You know, we looked at Christ, the Word, the Word who created the universe, the Bible says, became flesh. He put on skin and bone and he came to earth. Then we looked at Christ, the great high priest. Then last night we celebrated Christ, our Passover lamb. And today we're going to look at Christ, the Redeemer. You know, Easter is a holiday that's celebrated all around the world by the majority of nations around the world. But I would say the reality is not many people fully understand why we celebrate Easter or why it's a holiday or why Good Friday is actually good. And I think it's actually a great question to ask. Why the heck is Good Friday good when there's millions of people all around the world right now celebrating the death of this man Jesus on a cross like who does that? Like, why is Good Friday good? I get mourning and grieving and remembering someone's life, but celebrating someone's death. Well, to understand why Good Friday is good, to understand why the gospel is good news, we actually have to understand the bad news. And the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. So if this is your life here, this is you, this clear glass jar of water. If that was your life, you've got to understand that you are not clear like this. Not even when you're born are you clear like this, but there is this jar of sin. And sin ultimately has stained every single person The Bible says every single person in human history has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. Now, the Bible goes on in Romans 6 verse 23 and says, For the wages of sin is death. That word death actually means eternal separation from God. What we get for turning our back to want to do our own things, to choose to be satisfied with things other than God's glory, what we get is to be uh, falling short and sin. And that, what we earn for sin, is to be separated from God for eternity. So as people, we need to establish that we need redemption. We need saving. That word redemption actually means the action of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. Now, I don't know about you and your life, but I actually grew up uh, going to a Christian school. I grew up going to church on Sundays, and I would always hear this. Um, I would always hear this saying, you can be saved. You can be saved. And the reality is I didn't know what I was being saved from. So I'm honestly thinking, am I being saved from the devil? Am I being saved from myself? I mean, in 2020 or 2021, am I being saved from the COVID-19 vaccine? Like, what are we actually being saved from? Well, we need to understand the reason Jesus Christ came. He actually was on a one-way path to the cross. And the reason Jesus came was to save us from God's judgment on sin. Jesus Christ came to save us from God's judgment on sin. We got to understand that God is holy. He is perfect and he cannot be faced with sin. In his nature, he is gracious, he is loving, he is merciful, but he is also holy and righteous and just. And in his holy, righteous, justice, he has to judge sin and wrongdoing. The just punishment for sin is eternal separation from God. What we deserve is to be separated from him forever. But there is good news, my friend, and you don't have to end up separated from God because of your sin. And I know the term sin and talking about sin actually makes us as people feel uncomfortable because it's actually uncomfortable to have someone say, you're in the wrong. No one likes that. But we've all sinned. And we need to understand the the wages of sin is eternal separation from God in a place called hell. The destination for sinners is hell. It is really, really serious. But it's not designed for you. Hell is not designed for you, my friend. It is designed for the devil 
and his demons. And we get a choice in this life where we actually end up. We end up in heaven with God for eternity or we end up in hell with the devil and his demons for eternity. And Jesus talks about this. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, Jesus is actually talking about the final judgment. When the end of human history has happened, he says that God is going to judge every single person who has ever lived. And these people are going to be separated into two groups. There's going to be those who believed in God and followed Christ. And there's those who, who didn't believe in God and didn't follow Christ. And Jesus telling this in Matthew 25 says, Then the king will turn to those on the left and will say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire, listen now, prepared for the devil and his demons. My friends, hell is not designed for people. It's not designed for you. It's not designed for me. It's designed for the devil and his demons. And there is a way for us to be saved by God, by his goodness, by his grace, where we don't have to end up in hell. But the issue is sin and sin must be dealt with. Sin is so serious. Sin is the breakdown. Uh, why we see the breakdown in people's lives, why we see the breakdown in society, why we see the breakdown in the world. And you might be listening today and you might say, well, my life's not broken down. I mean, my life's going great. I have money. I've got a house. I've got a spouse. I've got a family. I've got a career. It's going awesome. Well, I just want to put this image up right now. And this image is ultimately what life looks like without Christ. Because we can go about our relationships and our careers and our comfort not realizing the impending danger that we are heading for a Christless eternity. Now, the issue is not, do we measure up to the world's standards? That's not the issue. The issue is, do we measure up to God's standard? And the Bible says, no. The Bible says we have fallen short. We have all sinned. Now, if you don't know Jesus, you must hear me right now. If you don't know Jesus, you will be lost for eternity. Hell will be the destination of where you end up. But my friend, it doesn't have to be that way. There is a God who loves you, who made a way for you. But sin is the issue and sin must be dealt with. Now, what I've learned and what the Bible teaches is that sin actually covers us in shame and distorts our view of God. And you see this in Genesis chapter 3, and this is the original sin. Genesis 3, Adam and Eve, the first people ever, the devil comes and he tempts Adam and Eve into sin to put their trust in something else other than God. Ultimately, Eve takes the temptation and so passes it on to Adam and they both fall into sin. It says this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. At that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. They suddenly felt shame. As soon as they sin, sin covers us with shame. Goes on in verse eight, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden. So I hid, I was afraid because I was naked. God replies, who told you that you were naked? Ultimately, sin covers us in shame and distorts our view of God. This is what I like to think of, of sin like, this kind of analogy. Now, if there's any other cafe lovers out there or coffee lovers, I mean, I love going to a cafe and I love drinking a coffee, um, but there's something about coffee that just, it just hits your body in a certain way, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, I can have one sip, I can have one smell of coffee, of coffee and it's like my body tells me um, you've actually got to go to the toilet and so I don't know if you've had this but you've drunk your coffee at the cafe and then all of a sudden you're like all right I'm going to the toilet and you walk up to the staff behind the counter and you say excuse me is there a toilet here and they say yeah just grab the key and they just point over as if like just grab the key over there and they point over to this this most ridiculous item the smallest little key this is all you need but they hand you this giant item. You know, when you need to go to the toilet in the cafe, you don't stand up and say, hey, everyone, I'm going to go to the toilet. Well, here's the reason. You don't need to because you've been handed this big awkward item where you're sitting there and as soon as you get it, you're like, oh man, this, this is awkward because it's like everyone knows what's going on right now. And you can't, if you're like me, I kind of try and try and hide it, try and be a little bit sneaky and walk out. But it's like, you can't hide this thing. It's so awkward. And people look at you from their table. They're like, 
almost like, good luck, my friend. And this is like what shame is like. It covers you and in our sin and in our shame, we think we can hide from God and shame wants to speak over your life and it wants to say that you're not worthy, that God doesn't love you, that God is not there for you, that you can't win this battle and without knowing it, sin and shame makes us want to hide from God and we see that all throughout scripture. In the the story of the prodigal son that Jesus tells where there's this son who leaves the father's house and he says, I want to go and live my own life. He lives this life of sin, doing whatever he wants. And eventually he's broke, he's hungry and he's dying. He says, what am I doing? I can go back to my father's house where there is food and he starts to rehearse his plan and he's gonna, he says, I'm going to go back. I'm going to say sorry to my father that I've sinned against you and I'm not worthy to be your son. This is what sin and shame does. It covers us and it makes us feel like we're not worthy of God. But my friend, this is why Good Friday is so good and this is why the cross of Christ is so powerful because the cross is God's redeeming act for humanity. It's his action to the world saying, I will show you what I'm like. Even though your sin has separated you, even though you can't earn your way back to me because I'm perfect and holy and I'm far above, I will come to you. I will make a way for you. I will redeem you. I will die for you. And on that cross, The King of glory, Jesus Christ, with nails pierced through his arms and his hands and his feet. And he hung there and the King of glory bled and he died for you and for me and for the world. Now, as people who are living In sin, we get to bring our sin-stained lives to the cross of Christ. And we get to bring them there and we get to say, God, I know that I've failed you. God, I know that I've turned my back on you. And even though I feel like I'm not good enough, I bring my record of sin to you. The sin that was going to separate me from you for eternity. And I bring it to the cross where Jesus, you died. And at the cross, our record of sin is washed clean. Now, for the sake of this analogy, this represents Christ and this represents his blood. And when we bring our lives to the cross of Christ, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin. This, this is the God that we worship. This is the Easter that we celebrate. Romans 3.23, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Verse 24 says, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This is the answer for the issue of sin and shame. There is only one answer, my friends, and it is the blood of Jesus Christ. This is why Good Friday is so good. On that cross, Jesus Christ hung, bled and died, and he took the judgment of God on sin. The judgment of God was poured out on his one and only son, Jesus Christ. The cross meant that Jesus, the son of God, was abandoned by the father so that you and I would never have to be. This is why Good Friday is so good. This is why we celebrate Easter, because Christ has come to redeem us. And Christ, the redeemer, has made a way through his blood, through his body, and through the cross. I just want to pray for us right now, and I want to ask if there is anyone who does not know Jesus. Right now in this prayer, you need to understand this analogy that we've used. We have sinned and we have fallen short. Every single one of us is the same. But Jesus Christ came 
and he died on the cross and it's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from sin. And so during this prayer, I just want you to close your eyes right now wherever you're listening to this and I want you to know that God came and he did this for you. He did it for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but will have everlasting life. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you right now for Good Friday. I thank you, Lord, that you came and you did what none of us would do. God, that you knew what the holy, righteous judgment of sin looked like. You knew what the wrath of God looked like against sin and wrongdoing, and yet you chose to come and you chose to give your life on the cross for us, Jesus. So today, Lord, we are so humble. We are in awe. God, we worship you with our whole entire lives. Jesus, I thank you for the cross. I thank you for your blood. I thank you for redemption. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. You know, today, if you're listening and you do not have that personal relationship with Jesus, then I want to tell you, my friend, this is the very reason you were born. This is the reason why you're watching this video right now. It's not on accident. It's because the God of the universe loves you that much that he set this whole thing up. He wants you to hear the gospel. You can be saved from sin. You can spend eternal life in the joy, in the glory, in the presence of God. But we actually have to respond. God's a gentleman. He will not force us. We can stay in our sin if we want to, or we can come to Christ. We can let the blood of Jesus that was poured out 2,000 years ago wash over our sin, make us white as snow. And if that's you today, my friend, I want to say this. Come to Jesus. Do not stay in your sin. Come to Jesus and give your life to Jesus. Just right now, I believe there are people all over who are watching and listening who are saying yes to Jesus Christ. If that's you, just say, yes, Jesus, I surrender my life. Just pray that prayer. Just start that conversation between you and him. Say, Jesus, today I give you my life. Thank you for forgiving me on the cross. I receive your forgiveness. Wash me white as snow in Jesus' mighty name. You know, if you're praying that prayer today or if you're just thinking that in your heart and you're saying, I want to be cleansed from sin and shame, then we want to know who you are. Please click on the links in this video. We'll get in touch with you. Even if you're not in our region of Tweed or Yamba, you're around the nation of Australia or around the world, we want to help get you connected into a local church family. But we want to celebrate if you are surrendering your life. This is the reason why we celebrate the cross. This is why we celebrate Easter because Jesus is that good.